to talk about with the 2024 BMW X2. It has new engines, a new transmission, a new suspension system, a new interior, and a new infotainment system, along with this fresh new look. If I were a lesser journalist, I'd tell you what's not new and just move on with my life. But here we are. Well, all of that is very exciting. I am a little conflicted about this vehicle. Let's take a closer look and I'll show you what I mean. Like the outgoing X2, this vehicle is based on the X1, but the X1 has grown up significantly and so did this. It's 193 millimeters longer than before and 66 millimeters longer than the X1 it's based on. How can these things still be considered compacts? Apart from the noticeable increase in size, you can just see how much more aggressive this vehicle looks. Like all the other even numbered crossovers in the BMW portfolio, this thing is supposed to be considered a coupe. But you can't fool me BMW, there's four doors here. Still, I do think it's probably the best looking sport activity coupe in the BMW portfolio. I also really like the additions found on this M Sport package equipped model. Specifically, the black window surrounds, the larger wheels, and the larger air intake. And while we're talking about the front end of the vehicle, I'll talk about my favorite part of the car, which is the grille. Now call me crazy, I kind of really like this new grille, mainly because it reminds me of the electric vehicles in the BMW lineup, like the iX, the i4, and the i7. Now this vehicle is gas powered, but there's supposed to be an electric version of the vehicle coming out sometime soon. In contrast to the front end that I really like, the rear end just looks a little bit bland. It looks like they just ran out of ideas back there. While we're back here, we can pop the trunk and talk about cargo space. Now back here, you'll find around 700 liters of cargo space. And that includes a handy little cubby underneath the floor. Well, typically you'd find a spare tire here, but BMW skips that. They prefer to not have a spare tire for you. Anyways, you can fold down the rear seats with a 40-20-40 split, and that adds some extra practicality to this compact crossover. Now let's be clear, this is not a very family friendly vehicle, at least if rear seat space is important to you and your kin. As you can see here, I don't have a lot of leg room despite these sculpted rear seat backs. And there's not a lot of amenities besides some charging ports. You're not gonna find heated seats back here at all. So let's move up front where things are a bit better. Up here, you can enjoy amenities like a heated steering wheel and heated seats, and it's a little bit more spacious as well. Now, BMW has redesigned the front seats for improved comfort during long trips, which will be important for those who get stuck in traffic jams, like those in Toronto, Montreal, or Vancouver. But in addition to that, they've redesigned the material on these seats. See, this is called Veganza, and it's made completely without any animal byproducts, which means it should be compatible with those who live a vegan lifestyle. In fact, even if you're not of the vegan persuasion, that is pretty cool and it doesn't feel too cheap at all. Beyond the seats and materials, this vehicle is loaded with high-tech features, which is pretty cool given the entry-level luxury price tag. One of the interesting things to note here though is that the rotary knob that's commonly found on BMW iDrive systems is completely gone, and this version of iDrive 9 with Quick Select is dependent on a touchscreen infotainment system. That comes with some pros and cons, like commonly accessed features like HVAC settings are not physical buttons, they're just here on the touchscreen. Fortunately, you can operate this system with your gloves on. There's just so much random stuff in this infotainment system, including a video game console that I can control with on my phone. I mean, I get it. We've all been waiting for somebody at a train station or airport. Even I've had to wait for my partner before. So yeah, it's a good way to kill some time. But with all this focus on technology, I have to wonder if the driving experience has been impacted at all. So let's hit the road and see what it's like. are two versions of the 2024 BMW X2. This one is the xDrive 28i model, and drivers who want a little bit more performance and engagement are encouraged to get the M35 xDrive version. Both cars have a lot in common. They both have a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, a dual clutch automatic transmission, all wheel drive, as well as 295 pound feet of torque. But there is a 71 horsepower difference between them. 
Now this entry level version of the vehicle has 241 horsepower, while the M35 version has 312 ponies. Now this 241 horsepower version of the motor allows you to hit 0 to 100 in about 6 seconds, while the 312 horsepower M35 xDrive can do it in about 5 seconds. Now BMW says this is a very heavily revised engine and they've changed the way the direct and port injection work. In addition to that, they've incorporated the Miller combustion cycle, which allows the vehicle to be a little bit more efficient. So as a result, you can expect to see 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers in combined driving conditions, which is an improvement of about 0.3 of a liter per 100 kilometers. Another new addition for this vehicle is the seven speed dual clutch transmission, which behaves pretty well even in slow speed traffic, which is kind of rare for a diesel. CT. The car also includes a limited slip differential at the front, which improves handling and allows you to get that power to the road. The suspension system has also been completely revised, both at the front and rear of the vehicle. And the goal here was to make the car feel a little bit more comfortable while also maintaining responsiveness. And I think they've done a really good job, even in this pothole marked season after winter. Now incorporating a DCT has made some things a little bit quirky in this vehicle. For example, there is no park setting. You just turn the engine off and the car will automatically apply the parking brake. I'm a little bit superstitious, so I do that anyways. In addition to that, there's a paddle shift here that says boost. You pull that and the car enters its most aggressive driving settings so that you can pull off a really quick pass. And on the road, this car feels way more powerful than the 241 horsepower that it suggests it has. I really think that they've done a really good job with the gearing. It's very rare to be disappointed with a BMW power plant, and that isn't the case here. To go along with the revised suspension, this vehicle with the M Sport package also has the adaptive suspension. And it also features a more direct feeling steering system. I definitely think it feels a little bit more natural than before, but it doesn't really give a lot of feedback. Now overall, I really enjoy driving this X2. I think the highlight here is the powertrain, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed when it comes to passing or getting up to speed. Now remember that thing I mentioned about all the technology kind of detracting from the driving experience? I kind of think there's something going on here. For example, this car is loaded with all those safety features and driver assists, but in order to change something like the gap for your adaptive cruise control setting, you have to go through the infotainment system. And that's really distracting. And that can be said about a lot of the other features in this vehicle. I miss it when it was just a button on the steering wheel, and that was easy and something that you could do quickly while you're on the go. Having to take your eyes off the road and poke at the screen for a bit muddies up the experience a little bit. The important thing to remember about luxury cars like this is that they're expensive and they have to do something to warrant that price tag. Now the 2024 BMW X2 starts at around 50K and all of the extra features and goodies bump that price up to around $60,000. Now at its base level, this vehicle is fairly good to drive. It's well riding and really stylish. But when you add those extra packages like the M Sport package and the premium enhancement package, you get something that's really high tech and customizable. And that helps the vehicle really stand out against the current crop of crossovers in the market. And that is a huge win for BMW. For Driving.ca, I'm Sammy Hadjassad.